Now for our What in the World segment. Conservatives often describe President Obama as a socialist. According to these critics, the president's goal is something called Swedenization. Sky-high taxes, bloated government, and ruinous welfare policies like European social democratic states. Well, the president should have taken some of these conservatives with him to Sweden this week. They would have found a country very different from their imagination and from the socialist Sweden of the past. You know how conservatives hate inheritance taxes or death taxes? Well, guess which country has no inheritance tax? Zero. Sweden. In fact, Sweden today is characterized by very free markets, freer and less regulated than the United States in many sectors. It does have high income taxes, but it uses these to fund things like health care and pensions that are far more efficiently run than their counterparts in America. Sweden tends to be near the top of most rankings on quality of life and competitiveness. But the old image of Sweden has some truth to it, 20 years ago. In 1995, Sweden had the largest government in Europe as a share of the economy. About 65% of its GDP was government spending, the nightmare scenario for the American right. Since then, Sweden has been reforming, opening up its economy, and becoming market-friendly and efficient. By 2012, government spending had fallen by a fifth. Sweden is now in sixth place, behind even France. Another outdated notion is that the Swedish model of generous health care and affordable education would run up enormous budget deficits. In fact, while America's deficit is 5.7% of GDP, Sweden's is 1 11th that amount, at 0.5% of GDP. Or consider labor markets. While the U.S. government bailed out Chrysler and General Motors, Sweden did exactly the opposite. The iconic Saab was allowed to go bankrupt in 2011. Volvo was acquired by the Chinese. It turns out that socialist Sweden is not nearly as socialist or crazy as the American right would have you believe. Instead, the changes of the last two decades reveal a Swedish government and people who are very pragmatic and adaptable. When Prime Minister Frederick Reinfeldt came to power as part of a center-right coalition in 2006, he moved to cut corporate taxes so that Swedish companies now pay lower tax rates than American ones. And the downsizing of government is part of a regional trend. In neighboring Norway, the leader expected to win next week's elections is a conservative running on a campaign to cut taxes. Slowly but surely, Scandinavian countries are moving away from big government to smart government. Now, despite the tax cuts and the recent moves to the right, Scandinavian countries are big spenders, but increasingly efficient and effective spenders. So Sweden may have been a last-minute addition on Obama's travel schedule, but that doesn't mean there aren't important lessons to learn there. Scandinavian countries have picked the best of right and left in some cases. It's time we redefine the word Swedenization. Instead of a slur, it might well be an example of smart capitalist economics.